Unlike fanny packs, ball cuts, and troll dolls, the sensation is back, only at Zaxby's. The sensation salad and the new sensation filet sandwich features hand-breaded chicken, Asian slaw, wonton strips, and citrus vinaigrette, and both are served with an egg roll. The sensation salad and the new sensation filet sandwich meal for a limited time, only at Zaxby's. And skip the line when you order ahead on the Zaxby's app or on Zaxby's.com. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up War Champ presented by Zaxby's. I'm Aslan. I'm in Tallahassee. Corey Clark joining us from the greater Atlanta area. It's a Renegade Express edition of the program. It's brought to you by First Commerce Financial. Lots of good questions. I, I don't know, Corey. You said, you know, we quite, you know, we haven't quite made it there yet. We're, we're here, though, right? Like, it's, it's football season. It's time. It's time. It's time. You can almost feel it. Now, we know what's churning out there in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, no. We know we know that's out there. That's still a possibility. Well, it's it's a it's a probability that's going to hit Florida. We just don't know when, and we don't know what they're going to do with the game. My advice would be move it up to noon. Number one, you get seven. It's seven hours. You know that you don't have to worry about that storm. Uh, seven additional hours, but more importantly, you got people that you know maybe people can get flights out Saturday night if they're flying in. Because Sunday it might you don't know Sunday it might be mandatory evacuation. If that thing's supposed to hit on Monday morning, they might make it a mandatory evacuation for the East Coast of Florida on Sunday. So why have a game on Saturday night where people will you know theoretically stay the night and then have them clog up the roads on Sunday? Get everybody home Saturday afternoon. And I know that's a bummer for people that are flying in later that day or, or Jacksonville morning, uh, flying into Jacksonville Saturday morning, but. It's either that or they might just cancel the game. They might say, we can't, we can't uh, devote the resources on Saturday night to, to this football game when we're worried about mandatory evacuation. So my opinion, not that anybody cares. Well, you guys care. Isn't that why you're listening? But nobody in power cares. Uh, move, the game, move the game up to 11 or noon and get it over with so people can be back on the roads by 4.30 or 5. You know, does this reverse 2017 almost? And no way am I saying to duck – uh, mighty Boise State, but almost like if this game got canceled and then Florida State opened up their season next weekend against Louisiana Monroe, maybe any benefit in that? Oh yeah, there's a huge benefit. Uh, I, I don't the the whole idea of opening up with good opponents. Uh, I'm, I'm not I I don't I don't think I'm a huge fan of that. I just I I don't think you can gain. I don't think there's a lot to gain from opening up with an opponent like this. Why not just move all of these games to week two? Yeah. Like you get a game under your belt, you kind of see what you need to work on, where you are, and then you play a real opponent in week two. Not that Louisiana Monroe is not a real opponent, but you know what I mean. I just, and I also don't think that game ones, these season opening games, when you play a real opponent, like a bowl type team, are indicative of what kind of team you're going to have. Because season opening games are always weird. Like, Virgin, you know, you would have thought last year after that Virginia Tech game, People thought Virginia. Oh, Bud Foster's a genius. Right. They, you can't give him a. The, the guy just has it. He's he is an absolute genius, and uh, he just he he uh, ate Florida State's lunch, which is fine. You can say he did that, but then he gave up fifty points to like Old Dominion two weeks from like Virginia Tech wasn't any good on defense last. And they're always going to be a little sloppy because they're the first game. So it's odd that you open them with real opponents. Yeah. Back in the day, I feel like you opened up with like Toledo's of the world and Tulane's. And then that second game was Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyhow, while uh, you uh, hunker down, everybody, may I recommend the Southern TLC filet sandwich from Zaxby's? That's what I'm getting for dinner tonight. What's more Southern than a ripe tomato and mayonnaise sandwich? Well, one that comes with a buttermilk marinated breast filet, hand breaded in custom seasonings, Corey Clark. Add some crispy you, shredded you said, lettuce to it. Why not? Why not? Well, sure, absolutely. It's a great sandwich. But you said what's more southern than a tomato? 
All right. Was that probably a bad, yeah. I, bad idea of I pitching? I mean, I feel like, way? yeah, I mean, maybe a tomato is how we tomato? pronounce it around here, buddy. What's more so than a ripe tomato and mayonnaise Part. sandwich? Well, one that comes Perfect. with a buttermilk marinated breast fillet, hand-breaded, and custom seasonings. Um, yeah, it's a meal, too. Crinkle fries, soda, everything. Do it. Zaxby's. Indescribably good. Uh, all right, Corey. So we spoke to Harlan Barnett and defensive leaders and players on Wednesday, we'll talk to Willie on Thursday. I'm sure when we speak to Willie on Thursday, we'll probably get some better clarity on what the plans are for uh, the game. As we record this, uh, Dorian has become a hurricane, so uh, it is a serious sort of situation to keep an eye on. But And I think the track uh, is it's supposed to make landfall on Monday in Florida. As a category, it could be a Category 3, which yes. is nothing to trifle with. Right. Um so again, it's not like it's going to be. I don't think it'll be hitting Jacksonville Saturday night. Maybe some outer bands start getting there Saturday night, but I think most of the bad weather starts on Sunday. Again, the problem is um, not wanting to have people on the road yeah. on Sunday. Maybe get people out of town as quickly as possible. Yeah. So we should know more uh, when we get back to you folks tomorrow. Or move it to Doke, baby. Do move that. it to Doke. There you go. Uh, do check out warchant.com for the latest. We'll have uh, Willie's comments from Thursday. Uh, use the promo code Adidas. That'll get you a $75 e-card to adidas.com and 25% off a membership. Now, Corey, I don't know if uh, everybody in the world listens to this program. I don't think so because that's a lot of people. Uh, but I think maybe somebody on the beat did. Uh, the story they came out with uh, after Wednesday's practice was, was the confidence level of the team, uh, something we spoke about on this very program uh, the day previously. So I haven't been able to listen to the comments from Jane Lars Woodby. Apparently he's quite high on the Knowles. I, I interviewed Marvin. Yeah, I mean, Marvin, it's, you know, Marvin did say we're going to shock the world. It wasn't quite Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali about it. it does say he feels like this, this team is an underdog. They're being kind of counted out, discounted, if you will, downgraded, I think he said. Uh, this goes into what Tamori and Terry said the day previously. It's just it's a, it's a theme, I guess, of this offseason now. Maybe finally, after a couple of scrimmages, and, and and they're and they're just ready to to show everybody just how improved they're getting. Uh, I hate to ask you the same question I asked you the day before, but just uh, how do you assess a team coming off a season that they had being uh, being this confident right now? I mean, I don't know. Like, fine, talk, but uh, know that if you go out and lose Saturday or whenever you play, um, and give up 35 points or lose 35 to 19 or, or 20 to 3, all these words are going to be come back against you. And then don't be the guy that says, love us later. Uh, you know, don't love us now. Or whatever they're saying is. Don't be a fan don't, later. Don't be a fan later. It's like, man, get, give them a reason to be a fan. And you just saying you're going to go dominate and you're going to shock the world and Florida State is back. And it's, they're just words. And you're talking to a fan base that for 14 years had the best program in the country, then had a bit of a lull, then for a very short window was the best program in the country again. Now they're coming off a five and seven season. This fan base is used to great dominant football teams. They, they are horrified by five and seven. And they don't really want to hear about how good you're going to be. They want to see it. Mm -hmm. So I get, it's great that they're confident. I wouldn't want them to, and I, it's great that they give quotes. I want them to be themselves. If they're confident, be confident. Just know that if it doesn't work out the way you want it to, these words are going to be used against you. It's like the uh, Miranda rights. The words are going to be used against you uh, in a court of law. These words of you saying how much you're going to dominate or how great you are, or how you're going to shock the world, they'll come back if you don't back it up. Well, that's, that's the unfortunate part of this whole business, right? I mean, we want these players to be honest and, and forthright. Then they say things, and then they, they leave themselves susceptible to these things. But are they being – I guess the question really is, are they being honest? Yeah. Like, do I they don't really think, think they're awesome? Do they really think they're going to go dominate? Because if they do, that's wonderful. That means they've seen – they think they're different than they were last year, and they think they are a lot better, and they think they have a chance to be a really good football team, which I'd hope they always would. But if, are they? Do they really believe that, or is that just August words? Yeah, I think Marvin was just on cruise control. It's like eight thirty in the morning. He's tired. He's got to practice and go to class. And it's just like, you know, how you guys feeling? You know, it's you know, we, we can't wait. We're excited, man. We're gonna shock the world. You know, I don't think it's one of these things where 
he's he, talking about that this is going to be one of the greatest seasons in, in program history or anything like that. And, and I hate to, to not take his words at face value, but I just, yeah, I mean, I think he's, he's just trying to be a, a gregarious sort of engaging sure. young man in interviews. So like, I'm, I'm not holding his words against him in, in a court of uh, the message boards and, and the podcast industry, but it's just something that's going on that, that I think is kind of interesting to, to see just kind of how confident they are. Let me ask you this core, because you know, Ira mentioned this as well. Ira, I think, was on a, uh, a statewide radio show earlier in the day on Wednesday. You were at the Extra Point Club a few weeks back with him. He was, you know, you guys have been everywhere, crisscrossing the state, talking to booster clubs. He was also in Destin a week or so ago. And he said he was on the Bianchi show. Mike Bianchi, a lot of folks know as a, a, a Florida, perhaps, apologist or what have you. Um, but was kind of joking with Ira that he was talking to one of his Florida State friends, Bianchi, and was like, I think you guys will be 8-4. and four. And the Florida State guy was like, golly, well, I sure hope so. And Bianchi's like, what's like, what's going on with Florida State fans, Ira, that they're happy uh, to hear about eight wins? Ira said when he was at Destin, he spoke to the folks and said that he, he sees probably eight, nine wins. And he, he was kind of bracing for a backlash or a gas when like eight wins, that's it. Uh, it it's, it's kind of bizarre that I guess two seasons worth that, that we're at this point that you know, I don't know where the expectations are. And like, do you have a feel for where the expectations are? I mean, look, you're coming off two seasons where you were three and six and one. You, you, you haven't beaten. Have you beaten a good team? Boston College? I mean, how many good teams have you beaten the last two years? Your record overall is whatever it is, one game below 500. So it would be, yeah, you, I mean, FSU fans obviously always want to be great, but you have to adjust expectations when you see what you've seen the last two years. So eight or nine wins would be wonderful. It'd be a great first step back to relevance if you can win eight or nine games, in my opinion. I think it'll happen, but who knows for sure. Yeah. Uh, last thing I want to mention before we get to the Renegade Express, just I, I found it interesting, and maybe we'll, we'll get some clarity I can from Willie, or maybe next time we talk to Harlan. I just found it interesting, and in, in speaking to Harlan, uh, very excited about the defense. He's talking about the, the way the defensive backs have been playing. Uh, vision and break is what he calls it. Being able to spot the quarterback, release the ball, and then breaking on the pass. Uh, or rather, the quarterback throwing the pass, breaking on the ball. Uh, expects, you know, turnovers are hoping for more interceptions, obviously. Every every coordinator says that this time of the year. But he kind of joked, like, I, I hope I'm not jinxing it, but I do think we'll do well in that regard. But he did mention that this this defense remains, you know, it, it's something that he, he's trying to make simple so that the guys can be confident and go out and execute it. I asked them, well, this is what you were talking about all last year as week by week went by and these losses started piling up. You kept trying to make it easy. Is this, to make it simple, is this defense also, is it more simple? And he, he just said that it's to a point where they know they know this defense. So any sort of trepidation folks might have about this reconstructed vision of the, the way they're going to play defense and, and going into a 3-4 and, and how difficult it's going to be to pick up the concepts. He he said that they they know this thing practically inside and out. They know it down cold, and they've repped it in so many different situations that they should be ready. And, and, and when you're ready, you're confident. When you're confident on defense, you're going to make plays. So uh, perhaps we should be a little more bullish on the defense, though I, I still remain a little bit uh, wait and see on that side of the ball. Yeah, man, we all are, right? <laughs> everything's wait and see with this team after uh, what we've what we've seen the last two years and both I mean both sides of the ball it has to be wait and see because they're both running different systems yeah. so you know we'll we'll see on Saturday buddy yeah. uh, if there's if there's something to really be excited about this season I, I do think there's a chance um, we're gonna like what we see on Saturday um, and then moving forward the expectations get raised a little bit but I'm yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not I don't know I have no idea what Saturday is gonna bring well, hey, folks, are you looking for a home loan or considering refinancing your current one? First Commerce Financial is a pure mortgage broker that eliminates the junk fees associated with most mortgages. They have relationships with several lenders and will work to get you the best rate in the quickest time possible, all the while offering you five-star level service. Mention that you heard them here on WarChant, and they will waive the appraisal fee for qualified borrowers. To get started or to ask questions, please call 248 248- 207-2404 or visit firstcommercefinancial.com licensed in Florida, Michigan, Arizona, California. <laughs> Good job, buddy. I like that at the end. Perfect. Yeah, let's get on the ponies, Corey. Uh, Sabaxley 1212. Serenity Express brought to you by First Commerce Financial. Gentlemen, wake up! 
We made it. FSU football is back. Only a few days to go. Over or under, Florida State plays seven and a half offensive linemen in Saturday's game against Boise. You guys are the best. Go Knowles. Beat Boise. Okay, so I'm going to say um, without injury, if we're not talking about injury, um, I'm going to go under. Okay. Really? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's not eight guys that I really feel good about. I mean, what we mm. got. So the starting five, Jawan, Brady, Bavion, Dante, and Ryan Roberts, then we would go six. Mike Arnold we probably feel good about. I don't know who. Yeah, and I think there's a chance that maybe you give one of the tackles a spell. Okay. Um, uh, you know, maybe if they're if if they just get winded, you give one of the tackles a spell. If especially if you're running 95 plays or something, right. but I just think you're not going to get to eight guys. I think seven guys, seven healthy bodies is what they would run out there. Oh man, I'll take the over. I think at some point maybe they'll throw a Baselli package in there. That'll be eight. There we go. He's back home. You got to do those sort of things. Uh, Drill Sergeant Porter. Hey guys, wake up. To answer your question from last week, yes, I have been in the Army all in all for nearly 18 years now and love it. That's awesome, man. Do what you love. Don't work a day in your life. My question, Drill Sergeant Porter, that is, this week is how excited were you about Miami's newest jewelry and their losing effort? I'm not talking about their newest version of the turnover chain, but rather when they score a touchdown and proceed to put on some brass knuckles, a.k.a. touchdown knuckles. I'm more curious if they score a touchdown off a turnover like a pick six or a scoop and score, then what happens? My guess is they will go full dress-up mode or even roll out a piercing station like it's Claire's in the mall and pierce each other's ears. As always, great show. <laughs> go Knowles. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's an great. option. Yeah. Sure. Jeez. Yeah, what are they going to do? What are they going to do next? Uh, well, yeah. I want to know because each time they got a turnover or a touchdown, it was in the midst of, I think they took the lead or it made it a close, you know, it was in the it was in the midst of a close game. What if they're losing? Say they're somehow get to the ACC championship game and they're playing Clemson, and they they score like a Keyshawn Helton touchdown did against Clemson last year. Do they put on the brass knuckles when when the touchdown pulled them within forty ten, or do you let that go? Like when um didn't uh didn't Florida who got the interception when they were trying to get Dabo Dabo's kid his touchdown? Do you remember that? I do not know. No. Yeah, they threw a fade when Florida State was playing them. Okay. And they threw a fade in the end zone. I think it might have been Asante Samuel. I can't remember. Somebody ripped the ball out of Dabo's kid's hands for an interception and a touchback. Did, did they put on the backpack? I would hope not when they're down yeah. 56 points. Next question. Maxwell Gibbs. Wake up. Knock if buck. Gents, life is all about taking advantage of the moment. I'm starting a new job the day after Labor Day, so... Because of the downtime, I now have my wife and I flying down to Jacksonville for the game. All caps. Man, he wrote this. What day did he write this? He wrote this on Ooh, Monday. Boy. Yeah. And as we record this, we really don't know. What's, what's, we might have to junk this whole show. There might not even be a game. Uh, anyhow, as soon as we pick up our rental car, we'll be stopping at a Zaxby's. That's exactly five minutes from the airport before making our way over to the beach for a few days before game day. With that being said, as a proud FSU graduate, I believe that Saturday will be a hard-fought physical game. In the end, however, I believe that the speed of the Knowles and being more used to the humidity will be big. FSU prevails 31-20. I asked the Tribal Council this after the Florida-Miami game, but now I'll ask you two. Who's the bigger punk, Malik Henry or Felipe Franks? With Malik, I somewhat feel bad for him not having his father for most of his childhood, but with Franks... I really hope that someone just knocks his blank on the turf every play. You know, the difference. Wanna, yeah, I don't want to be the arbiter of who's the biggest punk. Maybe no, if you, if you but, see me in Jacksonville, that, Maxwell, I'll tell you. I'm not going to go on the record about this. Though. The difference between the two is Felipe's actually done some things uh, um, right. and, and won some games and had some big moments in college football. And he took an absolute beating his freshman year. Mentally, physically, emotionally, from the fans, from the media, from I'm sure his teammates and coaches, because he wasn't any good at all. And he wasn't really all that good much of last year, but he got better as the season went on. And yeah, it's odd that he that he acts like that, honestly, because he's not good enough to act like that. But he's still okay. Like he's still playing college football and he didn't lose out the quarterback job. Like he has a reason. You know, he has more of a reason to be like that. And I think some of it also is just 
when he gets on the field, he's like that. I don't know what kind of kid he is off the field. I feel like we saw what kind of kid Malik Henry was off the field uh, for two straight seasons of the great last chance you. Uh, in closing, Maxwell says, this will be my wife's first FSU game. There's not a word in the English or Portuguese language that describes how much this will mean to me and how excited I am to share this with her. To be honest, I'm actually tearing up some writing this, so I'm going to stop. Thanks for all the great content you jabronis give us all. Yeah, you're welcome, Maxwell. Yeah, Good luck. I hope she gets to see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, running Knoll, she's from Jacksonville. Corey Aslan, wake up. Great show this morning. I don't know what morning, but it could be any morning. It would probably apply. Exactly right. I used to have those dreams about showing up to the final exam after being enrolled in the class all year, but somehow never attending, panic, nightmares. But I haven't had them in a long time. I guess because I'm further away from school, a.k.a. old. Anyway, just wanted to say that I'm so grateful that James Blackman is going to be our starter. He deserves it for many reasons. We were at the kickoff luncheon, and our way out, we observed James Blackman interacting with Leonard Hamilton, who was in attendance and looking great, may I add. Blackman was showing Leonard his dunk shot, I think. He is a truly good young man who bleeds garnet and gold. He has put in the work, has the arm talent, and is a natural-born leader. I could not be happier. No offense at all to Alex, Jordan, Wyatt, and Nolan. The only thing I wanted to tell you guys is that at my fantasy party on Friday, a fantasy draft party on Friday night, yes, we drove over to Tallahassee in the morning for the luncheon, then drove back to Jacksonville for the draft party in the p.m., one of my fellow fantasy owners showed up with a huge selection of delightful food from Zaxby's. He owns two Zaxby's franchises in Jacksonville. He'll be at the Spears and Cheers party presented by the Jacksonville Knowles Club at Surfer the Bar on Friday night. I hope that you will be able to meet up with him. Many thanks to both of you for getting us through the long offseason. I have good vibes about this team. See you Friday. Go Knowles. All right. Let's let's Oh network. yeah, all right. Well good. Let's we'll network. get to see uh we'll get to see a lot of people on Friday, I hope. Yeah. Hey, a real quick story about the kickoff luncheon and Leonard Hamilton. Uh, this is a true story, sincerely. We're getting ready to leave. It's myself, Ira, Tim Linnefelt of Seminoles.com fame. And then out of nowhere comes Leonard Hamilton walking up uh, in the house that he built and throws his arm around Ira and is joking around about, you know, how his offseason's been, talking about how big the players are. And golly, I wish I could have a couple of them playing basketball with me, catching up, chewing the fat. And uh, some fans are leaving and, you know, uh, kind of congregating and, and whatnot. And this young man, this young, this young boy, maybe probably Brady's age, I would say, uh, walks up to us and uh, we start kind of walking away from Leonard so that Leonard can, you know, meet and greet this young man. And a as I move away, Ira kind of comes in my direction. And, and the young boy starts following Ira and says, uh, Mr. Chauffel, I love your work. I read every single thing you write on War Chant. And like Leonard was getting ready to, you know, like, <clears throat> all right, let me get ready. I got to get my, my, my smile for the photo ready. And the kid totally just like skirt goes over and starts talking to Ira about how much he likes him. And then Ira's turning like freaking beat red with complete like embarrassment and everything. And then the father is like, yeah, he, he really does read your stuff all the time. He loves it. Takes a photo with Ira, and then I guess, you know, we kind of <laughs> guilted the kid. We're like, hey, man, you should probably take a photo with the coach. He's a pretty good guy, too. So um, it was hilarious, man. He's just like, oh, yeah, thanks, Coach Hamilton. So anyway, Ira, like, what did you think? Yeah, yeah was, Ira, let me get back to you. Yeah, yeah you're a big great. deal around here. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. That probably doesn't happen to Leonard Hamilton much in his life, I wouldn't think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, next question, J.I.I. -I. Knowles. Wake up! Jeremy from Miami, which is the hometown of Enrique Iglesias, Derek Gibson, Snoop Menace, Marvin Jones, and of course the great Irish show fell. No? Speaking of. Just wanted to thank you two for helping us get through the offseason. I really appreciate the insight the two of you give us Noel fans who aren't in Tallahassee. I also really appreciate the comedic relief Corey provides us on a daily basis. Keep up the great work, and always don't forget to rate and review Wake Up War Chan with a five-star rating. That'll get you a like. That's a good one. We like that. That, that is a good one. Was that his question? Yeah, not even a question. Just wants to tell us that we're awesome. That's nice. That's like two in a row that we've had that weren't really questions. They were just very complimentary. Yeah. And we uh, we appreciate those more, maybe even more than the questions. Yeah. J.I.I. Knowles uh, joined back in April 9th of 2002. That was the 15th post he's ever made. That's wow. Cool. There you go, J.I.I. I'd like to know what that stands for. Maybe it's Jonathan Isaac. Maybe he's been a... Member since he was five years old. There we go. Hey, when did Running Knoll uh, join? Uh, running Knoll's running been around since December 2nd, 2003. 
Oh man, we got a couple old. No, I don't want to say old timers as in like old, but just you know, dedicated uh, OGs. Yeah, dedicated subscribers. Uh, next question. Let's get to a question. This one, I think, there's, is there some question marks I see? So it is a question. It's B Steiner, thirty six. He's been around since August twenty eleven. Only forty eight messages. He picks a spot. It's time to wake up. Love the show. Love Zaxby's, of course. Need some in Ohio though. There is so much recent hype about. Blackman being named the starter. Realistically speaking, what should we expect from this season? There are people saying if we go above 500, Willie should get coach of the year. Some people are saying we win 10 games. After last season, my hopes are set at above 500. But what do you guys think we should expect on offense, defense, special teams, etc.? Thanks. One more question. How many times do we see the touch knucks hash down touchdown rings when we play Miami? I'm hoping for zero. I would say two. Okay. Um, not, not not. I'm still not convinced of that quarterback. Man, I got to see a little more uh, yeah. a little more data before I know what to make of that quarterback in that offense. Uh, yeah, I, I think that it's it's anywhere from 500 to nine wins. I, I would be I would be surprised at 10 wins, and I would be stunned at under 500. So I think that window in between is the is the realistic window for this football team. Again, I I, I, I I've said it a lot, but. Uh, over the over the months and over the years since we've been doing this show, I guess the two years we've been doing this show, you got to learn how to win. The, none of these guys on this team know how to win. They just don't. They've won, most of these guys have won eleven games in their career or twelve games in their career. That's that's usually a season at Florida State or it has been seasons at Florida State. And it's just it, you've got to learn how to win, and that's what I want to see. That's the next step with this program. You got win some close games. Blow out some teams. Just figure out ways to win. Yeah. Offensively, what am I expecting? I, I think offense will be the strength of the team. I'll say top fifty offense. Uh, defensively, uh, defensively, it was. Is that bold? Is that a bold? No, no, I'm just saying that. Like you know, it's Florida State. It's sometimes when we hear the things we say out of our mouths, or I hear what you say, or hear what I say. I'm like, man. Yeah. Is that is that good? It's going to be really it's going to be the strength of the team and it's going to be top 50 in the country. Yeah. So it's going to be in the top yeah, it's going to be in the top 50%. That's what if it's 46th in the country? That's you would just think Florida State would have higher goals than that, but they are coming from a place where they were like 111th. So that would be a huge jump up. And I just still, um, I know it was one rep, but just seeing Jawan and Brady lose reps badly just makes me think. Like, <laughs> That's staying with you a little bit, huh? Just James. I could just see James just dropping back and not seeing stuff and um, just getting pounded and pounded. But uh, I can also see success on the horizon. Defensively, I don't know, in the 90s probably. Uh, and special teams, I just think it, I don't know, like Ricky, dude, Ricky, I, I think Ricky will have a good senior season. I, I'm not as bullish on logan that's all i'll say okay uh, fair enough yeah next question enol underscore 2000 oh yeah game week all right with the introduction of the transfer portal roster management is only going to get crazier as time goes on in order to prevent total chaos i had a couple thoughts wanted to hear your reactions first do away with the red shirt everybody gets five years to play five second once you commit to a school you're obligated to be there at least three years after three, you can go pro or explore the portal to see what your options are for your final two years with the ability to play immediately for your new school. Only exception would be some extreme circumstances that would give you a reason to transfer, something like Petrino getting canned. My thoughts are to give coaches peace of mind knowing there will be at least some level of continuity so they don't have to worry about a player immediately bouncing if they aren't happy with their position on the depth chart. It would also hopefully help players buy in with the hopes of playing in the future as opposed to mentally checking out and looking to leave right away. What say you guys? You want to take this one, Corey? Go. Sure. I, I've said this before. Um, I, I don't. This is, I, I don't think that's a terrible idea. It's not any it's not any more terrible than the fact that a baseball player when he comes to school has to be in school till he's 21. The same thing for it with a football player. Like they can't go pro immediately. Or the fact that a, a great high school basketball player has to go to college for a year. All that really doesn't make sense. So if they're allowed to if the, all those other sports are allowed to do that, then yeah, I could I could see an NCAA stipulation where if you sign with a school, there has to be a certain criteria met where you stay at that school. The only problem is that the coaches don't have that. Yeah. So why, 
the coaches don't sign anything that says, okay, now you, you, you've signed with Florida State, Willie Taggart, but if the Colts come calling, you can't go. You have to be here for at least four years. Now, they have contracts, but they're not worth anything. They get ripped up all the time. Jimbo had a contract here, and he bounced. It just happens all the time. So if the coaches – well, we, there's there's you know, financial penalties to the contracts. I mean, Jimbo's was just really weak. It was that if he leaves Florida State before the contract expires, uh, wherever he goes is responsible for the remaining money that his so, assistants. But also owed. the question, I can't remember the questioner's name. Who was it? Enol. 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 Yeah, the great Enol. So I, I, he did say that if Petrino gets canned, you can leave. If that's one of the, uh, I, I'm all for it. If that's one of the stipulations, yeah. because I do think when a coach leaves, you should have the right to leave too. That's the person that recruited you to that school. And I know we say you're committing to the school, you're not committing to the coach. Well, no. that The school isn't recruiting you. Those coaches are recruiting you. Those are the people you have a relationship with. If they bounce, you should be able to have that option too. But I just don't know how fair that is. I, I get it. I, I it, it's, it's, it's problematic. The portal to me is problematic because you, you, you are having to re-recruit these kids all the time. And they, the first sign of adversity, they bounce. And I hate that. I hate that as a, for a society, not to get all Jimbo on you, but I hate that in our society that if you don't win the job right away, let me go somewhere else where I can where I have a better shot at it instead of uh, trying to win it back or, you know, busting my rump in, in winning it. Like, I hate the I hate the tucking the tail between your legs and, and running off to another school. But I also, under I, I you know, I think they have that right to do that. I, I don't know what the NCAA could do to make this transfer portal less problematic, messy, sloppy, because it's a, it's a free for all out there right now. Yeah. I do like that idea of that. You have to kind of, you know, once you sign that LOI or whatever, uh, or NLI rather, uh, yeah, you do have to stay there for three years. I kind of like that idea. Cause that I does, think two years, I think two years would be a better option. Maybe three but, years is a long time. Yeah. But I think to maybe his point, you probably start checking out in the middle of, you know, towards the end of year one, you're like, man, I'm if if you can leave after two years, it's like whatever. Like, I, I'm I'll next year I'll just go through the motions and stay healthy and lift and be healthy, and then I'm going to get the hell out of here. I think you know when I was working in TV, you had a contract as well, and most people like you sign a three year deal, but you really start looking for a job in year two. So I think as that's long as you, as long as on the letter of intent, it also says that you have a scholarship for three years. Okay, yeah, it's not one year renewable because most. I mean, I know most schools. They're they're four year. I mean, they're not they're not technically four year renewables, but those kids are on scholarship each year. But coaches can theoretically rip the scholarships away from them if they're not performing. So if you've got to commit to a school for three years, well, then that school has to commit to you in writing for three years as well. I like it. I think we're I think we're making some big time change. I like it. But uh, let's take a quick break. At Birch Orthodontics, they know what a difference a beautiful and healthy smile can make in your life. They take the time to get to know you and perform a thorough exam so that they can make an individualized treatment plan just for you or your child. They use the latest technology in a warm and comfortable environment. So whether you are interested in traditional metal or clear braces or clear aligners, they can give you the smile you deserve. They know investing in your smile means investing in your future. And at Birch Orthodontics, they are honored to be a part of your smile journey. Serving Tallahassee for 16 years and supporting the Knowles since forever. Check them out at birchorthodontics.com. B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com. All right, welcome back. Benzo's on Saturday. That's the name of this guy, uh, or gal. Uh, Joined on Thursday. Let's read more. Corey Aslan, wake up. My name is Hunter, and I'm a lifelong, or rather a longtime listener of the podcast. Uh, That'd be a very short-lived life. (laughs) I decided to take advantage of that sweet Adidas promo. So here I am, boys. Let's go. I'm from Pensacola, home of pound for pound boxing legend Roy Jones Jr., Hall of Famer, seminal great Derek Brooks. And according to this podcast, two-time Bolitnikoff winner, uh, Keyshawn Helton. Mm -hmm. After USC had wins from the 2004 season vacated due to, quote, Alabama-style recruiting violations, FSU stands alone as the only wire-to-wire number one in the modern era of college football. My question is, since they are preseason number one, will Clemson become the next program to accomplish this feat at the end of the season? If not, which team is the most likely to beat them and why? So Alabama Alabama was, has never been one to, number one to number one. They've never yeah. been wire to wire. No, man. No, 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 no. I guess they SEC. always lose a game, don't they? They always figure out a way to lose a game. Yeah. No SEC team has ever gone wire to wire. Let's look at it. Let's, let's say it that way. Punks. Man, that's crazy. 
Yeah, we'll see how uh, how they play with the the huge target on their back. I, I still think probably the best shot is them losing to Alabama if they meet each other in the playoff. Uh, oh, I thought he just meant on the schedule. Yeah, they can definitely lose a playoff game. I, I don't know how good their defense is going to be. We'll we'll see. Um, yeah, they could definitely lose in the playoff to anybody that's in the playoff. I just thought he meant the first twelve games. Oh yeah, that's probably the the better way to answer it. Yeah, if I had to pick somebody, I probably would say uh, A and M. Although I don't know, watch out for the Knowles. Could be sneaky. Just you know the way they walked in there in seventeen and almost snuck away with one. Uh, and fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Well, fifteen, we were on you know level ground, kind of. I mean, we were we were still a national title contender in fifteen. I don't so. know, man. It was Sean McGuire versus Deshaun Watson. Still though, man. McGuire, we still had that that Dalvin guy. Number four was all right. <laughs> he was pretty good. If he had had a healthy hamstring, man, because yeah. he had a he he had like that whatever that was the eighty yard run on the first possession yep. and then he had another one that would have been like a 70 yard touchdown and i think his hamstring caught him again yeah. um if he'd had a healthy hamstring they probably win that game yeah. uh benzo's on saturday ends with i'm also a writer and a huge fsu fan what's a guy got to do to get a job at war chant with the great Corey clark and his sidekicks in all seriousness thanks <laughs> fellas keep up the quality content you guys are renardo green level underrated Oh, that's big time. Um, yeah, I would say uh, that's a good uh, that's a good description. Uh, Corey's sidekicks. That's kind of how I feel most of the time. Um, I would say seriously. Uh, I don't uh, email Ira Chaffel, Ira at Warchant dot com, okay. and uh, go from there. All right. Also, real quick, Corey, you talk to Brady or whatever. Like you'll tell him that Southern Cal went wire to wire, right? Like you won't be like, well, it. Doesn't actually count because... No, I don't recognize that season at all, and I don't remember who Reggie Bush is. <laughs> Next question. More to Pride, Noel 850. Wake up! After watching that train wreck of a Miami-Florida game, do you feel either of those teams has a strong edge in beating us, especially Miami? How do you force three turnovers and only score three points? Almost feels worse than our offense was last year. Do you all think we have a realistic shot of beating Florida in the swamp? I'm not pounding my chest too much until I see what Florida State does. Uh, I mean, opener, no one looks good in opener except Jameis Winston. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't, if anything, I, I looked at that game and I'm like, damn, Miami's defense is pretty good. Um, and so is Florida's to a certain extent, although I think Miami's offensive line was just so putrid. It's the first week. We're not going to see either of those teams until November. I don't, I'm not, I don't put a lot of stock into what we saw in those games, personally. Absolutely. Like I was saying earlier, I think it's really hard to, to make us, it's really hard to make projections based on a week zero football game. I mean, that's a hard opener for both those teams. You don't get a chance to work out kinks because you're playing, uh, you know, top 25 caliber teams. Those are in an emotional game. A rivalry game, I guess, for so long. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that it, it's really hard to make judgments about that, uh, about these two teams based on that on that one game. Just like I said last year, you would have, if you were a Virginia fan or, I don't know, a, a Duke or whoever else, and you saw that Virginia Tech, or an Old Dominion fan, and you saw that Virginia Tech defense and dope, you'd have been like, oh, my gosh, we're not going to be able to get a first down. Well, no, they were just playing a team that was completely inept that night and hadn't figured anything out. We'll know more you know, by October what those teams are. I, I think both those defenses are good. I'm not sold on either one of the quarterbacks, but I also I, I wasn't sold on Florida that much last year. It's not it, – unless the season just goes off the rails, I would never think that Florida State going into Florida has no chance. It's not going to be like 2009, like Tebow's senior day. Like there, You're not going to go into that game thinking you have no chance to beat that team. They're not – I don't think they're that talented on either side of the ball. A.S. Dillon, wake up. I just saw the ESPN predictions for the ACC. They have FSU going 8-4, and four, finishing third in the Atlantic, Miami winning the Coastal at 9-3, and three, Manny coach of the year. What do you think it would take for Willie to get the nod as coach of the year? Personally, I think FSU improving by three wins is more impressive than Miami improving by two with their weak schedule. But who am I? Well, you're a, you're a subscriber, and your question is worth... Uh, examining uh willie would need to win <laughs> willie would need to win 10 and beat clemson to win acc yeah. coach of the year and i and if i was voting in that i don't think i vote in that i might i'm not sure if i'm one of the voting members of that um i would not vote for willie unless he beat clemson because again i i don't understand man i do say again a lot somebody pointed that out on he Seminole headlines that i say again a lot when i haven't actually said something the first time <laughs> 
I got to work that out of my system. I don't know how I do it. I don't know if there's like a rehab I can go to. Well, there was something that you used to say all the time that Shannon pointed out that I don't think you say anymore. So, you know, now that you're aware of it, I think you'll be able to work yourself out of it. I don't know. That's at least the third time I've done it, being aware. It just comes out of my mouth. That's kind of how I talk. Just I don't even think before I talk. So anyway, um, I'm gonna, I would vote for Dabo. I vote for whoever wins the conference. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is like I don't, you don't want to give Willie Taggart too much credit for getting to like eight or nine wins when it was also his team that only had five. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it, I don't think you should get too much credit for having such a bad season last year. It's just, just exceeding expectations shouldn't be enough to win the coach of the year award. I think whoever wins the conference, especially if Clemson goes and dominate, just like I thought it was ridiculous that Cutcliffe won it in 2013 when Jimbo Fisher had the best team in ACC history, literally of the best team in ACC history, but it's because it's Florida State. He got one vote, and Cutcliffe got like sixty, yeah. because of, oh, Duke won. Duke went five and three in the Coastal. Well, that's your coach of the year. How about the guy that put together an NFL team yeah. in three years uh, uh, with after having gotten the job? He put that together. So yeah, I, I wouldn't then go back on my my uh, my sentiment or my stance on coach of the year and then vote for a guy that just won eight or nine games and got beat by Clemson. I would I would vote for Dabo if he wins it. Florida Mom 777. Good morning, Aslan and Corey. In the event that the hurricane causes a cancellation of the football game, does FSU receive some kind of penalty from the city of Jacksonville requiring payment of lost revenue for the game being canceled? Just feels like nothing good has come out the opening games recently, and this could be another addition to an already down and out fan base. Thank you. I, I think that's a good point. Like, yeah. obviously, Alabama was a disaster. Um, then last year was even worse. Yeah, Labor Day was a bummer. Yeah, and then this one it might be canceled. So, uh, yeah, no, that I don't know. I don't think Florida State wouldn't owe Jacksonville anything. But uh, no, she's she's asking, does Jacksonville have to pay us money? Like, do we receive oh, some kind of money? It, from I them? thought he said the other way around. Well, she FL mom. She oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Florida mom. Um, no, I don't think any money is owed to anybody. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate uh, cost of doing business. Living, but Florida, you're losing money. You're going to be losing money if you don't have a football game over there. Yeah. Iowa Knoll won. Not so much a question as a heads up. My son and I are flying down for the game. We will be crashing at one of your places if we are stuck down there. Thanks in advance. <laughs> All right. Well, we got- so the la- the, the and again, we're recruiting, we're recording this on Wednesday, but one of the models has the thing going over Central Florida, then getting in the warm water of the Gulf, and then charging straight up to Tallahassee or the Panhandle. So we might not be able to escape this thing. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I won't be there. I will probably if if the if the hurricane is hitting the Panhandle, um, I will be in Atlanta most likely. But you're welcome to stay in my house. Sure. All right. I would know. We like him. Carl's bad. Noel. He's got like a photo of Copernicus or some sort of. By the way, real quick, I I really do hope the game happens. Like I for somebody like Iowa Noel, and uh, I think somebody was it. I can't. I do too many of these. Aslan. I I think it might have been a headline. Somebody from Amarillo, Texas, is flying over for his first Florida State game, and then Iowa Noel is flying over. It's like, man, I hope this thing happens. I hope. I hope the powers that be, if they're going to move the game up, don't decide today. Please. Yeah. So decide today that the game is going to start at 11 a.m. on Saturday or Friday night at 10. Who cares? But decide today to try to give these people a way to call Delta or call American Air or whoever they call. Eastern is Eastern still around? <laughs> call know. them and uh, Pan and, Am, and so think, they can change. I think they Pan change Am their might flights. Have swallowed them. I think Pan Am swallowed Eastern. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, call Pan Am and uh, and see if they can. Ch- these people can change their flights so they can come to this game. It's real. People love coming to college football games, and I hope the powers that be make the decision as quickly as possible to move this thing up so people can uh, adjust their schedules. Yeah. Ira Schofel has reported on Warchant.com that uh, there is a scheduled meeting at some point on Wednesday to discuss potential uh, you know, uh, mitigation plans or backup plans or anything like that. If, uh, if anything does happen, we'll, I'll record a disclaimer and tack it on the front end of this. But otherwise, uh, we're just going to keep chugging along. We've got only like uh, two more questions here or so, I think, where we're doing all right. Uh, Carl's, Carl's bad, Noel, uh, says, in college, would you rather have a great kicker or great punter? In my opinion, great punters make a real difference in the college game. Great kickers, not so much. 
College punting compared to NFL is vastly different. Bad punting in college makes a big difference in field position like five to ten times a game. Just watch a pro game and they're punters. Give me a great punter all day long. What do you – I? well, I don't know. Yeah, Corey, you probably – because you you're, you never want to go. You, you're just like, go for it. You never want to kick. Um, so you probably would take, um, you know, the punter, right, because you're never going to kick field goals. You're just going to always go for six. No, I was going to I was going to be the opposite. I, I think right. the only way I'd want a great punter is if he's great at pinning it inside the six. Those things can't be overlooked. The guy that can pin it inside the five or the four yard line a lot yeah. is a, a great weapon. Otherwise, most of these guys are punting at 40 yards with no return because they do the whole let me scoot off, scoot off to the right a little bit and kind of act like I'm going to run and do a soccer style rugby, whatever we call those kicks. Um, that's happening a lot. You don't see a lot of great punt returns. Now, again, Logan Tyler, there I did it again. Um, Logan Tyler punted, punts the ball right down the middle sometimes, which isn't ideal. But if he can get away from that, he's just a normal college punter. But I will say this, Rick, uh, not Ricky, sorry. Forgive me, Roberto. Roberto Aguayo in 2014, you had the great, he had probably one of the greatest seasons a college kicker has ever had. And you could say without him, if they just had an average kicker, they might have been 10 and 2 or 9 and 3 that year. No, they don't beat Miami. Like, they don't beat Miami without Roberto. I mean, they made, he made some, every game was close in the fourth quarter. He made some huge kicks that season. And um, I, I just think that can't, if you go past, like right now, if they're facing a fourth and four at the 27 yard line, against Boise State, I think you probably send Ricky Aguayo out, but you're not real confident. Yeah. But when Jimbo was facing fourth and four at the 20, well, number one, if he was facing fourth and four inches, Aguayo's going out there, it doesn't <laughs> matter. But you felt really confident, okay, I got three points on the board. Yeah. This drive is at least getting us points. That's really comforting for for a head coach, I think. So I, I, I think you'd rather have the kicker, personally. Yeah, I agree. I was going to try to be contrarian. Uh, I mean, you know, Alabama obviously has been rolling for a while, but they, they had a few years where they had that J.K. Scott guy. I, there was a couple of games where he would just be on fire, just yeah, ripping off a like 50-yard punch just sky high. But ultimately, yeah, to your point, Corey, when, yeah, if you get the ball inside the 30-yard line and you feel like you have a 75 80% chance of making, getting three points with, with a guy like Roberto Aguayo, that's, uh, that's priceless, man. That's priceless. D. Ward FSU commenting on Drill Sergeant Porter's question about Miami's jewelry uh, fetish says uh, the Miami belly ring, nipple ring, will be next year. In two years, it'll be the turnover Santa Maria sacrifice on the 50-yard line. Let's hope that. Let's not hope not. Uh, Ira Brofell. <laughs> he surfaced. Here he is. He's a real <laughs> living Brofell. person. <laughs> Ira Brofell. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for all your hard work you guys put in covering the team and keeping us informed. My question is, Given that we heard how close the quarterback battle was, what do you think the leash for Blackman is, if there is one? I'm going to defer to you, Corey. Go. Yeah, I think there is one. I think if you're uh, if you're at halftime and you've scored three or six points, or if you're in the middle of the second quarter and he's had, I don't know, a couple turnovers and three straight punts, let's see it. Get Try to go and, and see if you can get a hot hand. So I think there's a chance by like the – if it's really bad, five or six possessions in, you can make a switch. Man, that's just that's hard. I also don't predict that's going to happen, yeah. but that that's certainly a possibility. Yeah, I, I, you know, you pointed out kind of the obvious factor in there, which I really wasn't bracing for. But yeah, I mean, this, you know, Kendall is calling the plays. I'm sure Kendall might have a little more, you know, leeway in terms of personnel choice at the quarterback spot than Walt Bell had, but. It was interesting. There was the one time, I don't know, after you know, week six or something where you know, Willie's getting ready to leave the, the interview during practice, and, and Ira's like, hey, real quick, uh, like, are you thinking at all about maybe making a change? And you know, Willie had this sort of a, like this dumbfounded look like, are you serious? Like, people are, and then Ira's like, hey, man, it's not me, but people are asking. He's like, really? He's like, yeah, we're not doing that. It was just like at no point in the midst of a really bad offensive production season – was a quarterback looked upon as as being a problem, and if and if this offense doesn't go on Saturday, you know, Lord willing, the game gets played. I don't. I I would find it hard to believe that it's going to be James Blackman's fault. Like I, I think probably the offensive line might have uh, their issues again, and I don't know what bringing in Alex Hornibrook would do uh, to remedy that sort of thing. But I, I would hope that maybe there would be that sort of courtesy to to let him have a long rope uh, the way that DeAndre had. But again, it's. 
it's a new coordinator, and uh, he he says, like you said, uh, two starting quarterbacks. So if the one guy isn't getting it done, uh, let the other guy loose. But. And I also think that um, Willie Taggart right rightfully thought, man, the quarterback isn't the problem. It's the dudes in front of him that's the problem. Yeah. You know, so hopefully that that has been uh, at least somewhat uh, fixed in the last whatever nine months. Yeah. All right, man, we got to the last question here. Here we go. Last one here on the Tribal Council's uh, Renegade Express brought to you by First Commerce Financial. Uh, comes from Soza underscore ZP. Wake up. Game week, fellas. Stakes are high, but we will be ready. There is a storm brewing off the coast as well as an even bigger storm waiting for Boise. That is the Florida <laughs> State football team in Duval County. Nine Absolutely. months has passed. And now it's our time to prove that we've changed. JB1 will lead us to the promised land with a tandem freak show that is Acres and Lambeau. We're almost there, everyone. Time to work. P.S. If you have some downtime, feel free to watch the Francois documentary. And he linked a uh, video here. Uh, Oh, sorry. I just muted myself accidentally. Um, He, yeah, he linked a video. Apparently there's a, it's, uh, it's titled DeAndre Francois back on, back on road. Is the name of the doc. It's on YouTube. Uh, I guess check it out. Uh, no up. 2019 is ours for the taking, says Sosa. Do you feel there's a storm brewing that's even bigger than Dorian for Boise State, and that is Florida State's football team, Corey Clark? No, but only because Dorian's a big-time storm. Yeah. If it was still a tropical storm, I would say, yeah, Florida State football's got that beat. But I, I'd say right now Florida State football's, what would you say, like a Cat 2? Cat 1, maybe? I mean, Dorian's going to be a cat three. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say Florida State football is as big as that. And seriously, folks, if you live on the East Coast and you listen to us or if you live in Florida at all, pay attention to this thing. And if it's if it's bearing down on you, get the get the heck out of Dodge. Come up to Atlanta. Atlanta's a great place to be. Also, our listeners in Hispaniola uh, hunker down. Thoughts are with you for, all right. for real. All right, Corey, we're done. Uh, that's it. We got through all the questions. Well done. Appreciate your time as always. Uh, folks, check out warchant.com. Ira's got some stuff up there. So does Corey. I think we even have a tutorial, kind of a uh, ACC Network 101 if you live in Comcast country like myself and Corey, uh, who's got two homes, but one of them is in Comcast country. The other one's in another one that doesn't have ACC Network, but <laughs> it gives you some exactly. ideas of, of what you can do. Uh, to uh, watch uh, the newly launched network. But uh, with that said, again, check out warchant.com for the latest uh, and for updates on the status of the game. We thank you, as always, for listening. We'll be back with you folks. We'll probably do a little over-under on Friday. We'll get back into the groove. Corey, what you think about that? I can't wait. I cannot wait. He's Corey Maslow. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great one, everybody. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. Warchant.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.